there are many rivers on Earth. According to various sources, their numbers range from 2.5 to 4 billion. Throughout the history of mankind, rivers have been a source of life and prosperity, but the rapid activity of people has led to the emergence of water arteries that bring disease and death. One of the most dangerous and toxic today is the Satoram River in Indonesia. What made it this way? How do people live on the banks of this river? What efforts are being made to purify it? Sitorum is the longest and largest river in West Java, with a length of about 270 kilometers. It flows through thousands of settlements on the island, connecting the villages and residents of Indonesia's most populous province. And this is more than 25 million people. The Green Cross Switzerland and the Pure Earth Blacksmith Institute list Sitorum as one of the 10 most polluted places in the world. This is a real ecological disaster as the waters of Sitorum are literally suffocated by household waste and chemicals from hundreds of industries thrown into the water. Mountains of dirt and waste piled up on the banks of the river and people are forced to live among them. According to the Asian Development Bank in 2013, about 9 million people lived in close contact with the river, where levels of fecal coliform bacteria are more than 5,000 times the mandatory limits. And now, people suffer from a host of illnesses, such as dermatitis, rashes, intestinal problems, kidney failure, chronic bronchitis, and tumors. After all, most local residents have to use polluted water directly from the river to bathe, wash clothes, as well as for drinking and cooking. Moreover, former fishermen do not make a living from the catch, but from the trash they fished out of the Satorum, exposing themselves to infectious diseases and poisoning. At the same time, the income of these garbage collectors barely reaches one to two pounds per week. But even 40 years ago, this river had clean water, which the local population fetched for their own needs, fished and grew rice, one of the main products in the diet of the residents, which became inaccessible due to pollution. What made Satorum one of the most poisoned places on the planet? Since the 1970s, more than 800 textile factories have been established in the areas where the Satorum flows, for which the locality has received the Dollar City nickname. Access to cheap and plentiful water has been the key to the rapid growth of the entire region, as processes such as bleaching and dyeing textiles consume large amounts of water. According to the latest data, about 2,800 factories currently use Satorum as a source of water. Most of the factories located here still produce textiles, and some of them are important links in the supply chains of global fashion brands such as Zara, Gap, Adidas, and H&M. 61% of the clothes produced on the banks of the Satorum are shipped to foreign markets. Environmentalists point out that more than 20,000 tons of waste and 340,000 tons of sewage from these textile factories are dumped into the river every day. One of the results of such pollution was the death of a significant part of the river fish population, which since 2008 is estimated at 60%. At the same time, the drains of textile factories are checked for very limited number of parameters. Tests conducted in May 2012 at the plant located in Chimahi showed that the wastewater from one of the plant's outlet pipes has a pH of 14, the highest possible level of alkalinity that can burn human flesh. The situation is complicated by the specific attitude toward the river of residents who do not have a culture of water conservation. Unfortunately, people treat the river as a dumping ground, dumping excrement and household waste. Another serious problem is corruption. It's no secret to anyone here that inspectors can be paid to look the other way. So far, only 14 companies have been subject to administrative or criminal sanctions for polluting Satorum. The Indonesian government, meanwhile, blames the vast majority of the region's residents who dump their household rubbish and pour untreated sewage into the river for pollution. But in many small villages along the Satorum, there is no public garbage collection or landfill, so people have to choose between burning the waste or simply throwing it into the water. The Asian Development Bank began to allocate money to combat the pollution of the river in 2008. Its total investment is estimated at half a billion dollars. Most of it was spent on the construction of retention ponds, reforestation of upstream hill country, and other construction projects to regulate the flow of the Satorum. 
In 2018, the Indonesian government launched the Satorum Harem Project, a seven-year river revitalization program that aims to make the Satorum water drinkable by 2025. The task is not easy, but it has significant support. The purification of the Satorum River will take seven years and will cost $4 billion, which they plan to raise from private and public sources. 7,000 military, police and numerous volunteers were sent to purify the river. A broad information campaign was held for residents, explaining how the discharge of garbage into the river affects the ecology of the entire planet. Efforts have begun to be made in cities to modernize existing systems for collecting garbage, sorting waste, etc. And most importantly, a department was created to control the discharge of waste into the river. Video surveillance cameras were installed on the coast and fines for polluting the river were tightened. Compliance with the new rules is monitored by special teams. The level of pollution was initially such that one of the local communities which was actively involved in the program began to sell 250 tons of plastic per month for recycling. But not everything goes so smoothly with the purification of Satorum. There are problems. First of all, it's the lack of money for further actions and the lack of coordination at the local level, as well as the bribes that factories pay to avoid changes. The problem of soil erosion upstream due to the destruction of forests increases the silting of the lower river. The situation with the purification of the banks and waters of Satorum is further complicated by the fact that some factories still violate the ban by dumping toxic waste at night. It's about 20% of operating enterprises. At a time when some of the local residents help the authorities to identify violators, the others, when there are no patrols nearby, continue to throw garbage into the river. But the situation, albeit slowly, is gradually changing for the better. Factories that violate environmental laws are closed, and illegal settlements that dumped solid waste, detergents, and feces into the river and its tributaries are relocated. It's known that 43 companies that violated the law were fined. The Office of the Attorney General of the Republic of Indonesia said seven of them paid fines ranging from $1.3 to $13 million. The quality of the water in the river has exceeded the target set for early 2020. Currently, the pollution level is 40.67, which corresponds to moderate pollution. Although the river has now been purified outwardly, the chemical composition of the water is still far from satisfactory. The country's authorities will need at least a few more years and significant capital investments for the Satorum to become a safe river again. However, there are already places where the water is safe enough for swimming. Over the past two years, local farmers have managed to harvest six rice crops. And the garbage men who once hunted for plastic cups and bottles are becoming fishermen again instead. Nonetheless, for the first time in a long time, residents were able to breathe normally in their homes, as the river previously exuded only a terrible odor from which there was nowhere to hide. 20 to 25 million people live in the Satorum River Basin. Its complete purification can radically change the lives of all these people. And improving the lives of so many people will irreversibly lead to a global improvement in life on the entire planet.